perspective. And when I came into my marriage, man, um, there was a lot of expectations that, that were required of me that um, that I, I didn't meet. And um, some of them were reasonable and some of them were very unreasonable. And um, like I said, when you when you are in a place where you're not healed and you you're you're that uh, people pleaser person or that have that Superman complex that, you know, we talked about in one of our uh, very first podcasts. It's it's really hard to not set that boundary and say, look, man, hey, I I can meet you on this, but this right here, I can't meet you on. Uh, joke of the day, I guess. This is a joke. I was coming <clears throat> to my hotel room mm -hmm. and or I was checking in and one of the guys, his brother, right, got braids and everything. And he's like, um, because I'm this is my second run. I had to bring my backpack and all the other stuff upstairs, but then I had to come back down to the car and get my lights. <laughs> I think I know where you go up and keep on going. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I'm 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 coming. Oh Lord. And he's like, you about to record a movie? I'm like, nah, this is a YouTube channel, bro. I'm just about to do something. <laughs> no, just recording on Zoom with the homie or whatever. He's like, oh, okay, get your bread, man. I'm like, that's what's up. Now, earlier, <laughs> earlier in the day, Clarissa told me she was like, yeah, you take them lights in there. People going to think that you you recording something that's unethical. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's the PG version. I ain't gonna tell you what she really said. Oh Lord! Man, I'll save that for a conversation that you know when we get to talk off off camera. Right. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another segment of Forties Unfiltered. You ain't heard conversation like this. This is Sean Heineman with the one and only Jason Lockhart. <laughs> what's up, bro? How you doing, man? Man, what's good, man? Just hanging in there, man. Trying to maintain, man. Yeah. Wow, man. I hate yeah. it. What about you, man? Man, on my solo location, you know how I do sometimes. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Trying to get there, man. I'm trying to get there. Uh, it's weird that you said that because um, I was telling Je uh, Jess that you were, uh, that's what you were doing. And uh, she was like, matter of fact, I'm, a, I'm, I'm going to book you on. So that's coming up for me. <laughs> that's what's up, man. Yeah, because I got a lot of flack from it at first. You know, people were hating or whatever. But I'm like, you know, men, we are important too. Husbands, fathers, you know, saying we important too. We we deserve that little break too. Cause I think a lot of times we get uh I'm trying to think of the, the proper word. But anyway, we don't really get I think we don't get the credit we deserve, especially for us when we're doing the things that we're supposed to do, helping our families and stuff like that. I think we deserve breaks, too. I get it. Moms do amazing things, but we do some stuff, too, and we need a break every so often. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And uh, it's interesting you said that, man, because, again, you know, we're, we're the foundation. And so when you look at um, any edifice or um, building, man, you know, it has a foundation and it wouldn't be there. All the amenities in the building would not work if there wasn't a foundation. So, you know, that's kind of one thing that's forgotten about, forgotten about, you know, with any establishment, and it is the foundation. So that's what we do, man. And, you know, we wear it proud. And I, I also think that the solo location, man, is, is a form of uh, self-care. And as a as black men, you know, just men in general, you know, we 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 tend to shy away from that, man. And it's just always we're exuding and uh, giving out in per in uh, in in a stance instead of having some type of self care, man, and maintenance and taking care of ourselves, man. You know, if you run any type of vehicle, it needs its proper maintenance. So self care is big, man. So bro, it's another form of it, man. That's what's up, man, for sure. Are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good. Or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips 
that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video. And it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. Uh, joke of the day, I guess. This is a joke. I was coming <clears throat> to my hotel room mm -hmm. and or I was checking in and one of the guys' brother, right, got braids and everything. And he's like, um, because I'm this is my second run. I had to bring my backpack and all of the other stuff upstairs, but then I had to come back down to the car and get my lights. <laughs> I think I know where you're going, but keep on going. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I'm 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 coming. Oh Lord. And he's like, you about to record a movie? I'm like, nah, this is a YouTube channel, bro. I'm just about to do something, <laughs> you no, know, just recording on Zoom with the homie or whatever. He's like, oh, okay, get your bread, man. I'm like, that's what's up. Now, earlier, <laughs> earlier in the day, Clarissa told me she was like, yeah, you take them lights in there. People going to think that you you recording something that's unethical. Um, <laughs> that's the PG version. I ain't going to tell you what she really said. But oh Lord! Man, I'll save that for a conversation that you know when we get to talk off off camera. Right, right. <laughs> wow, that's yeah. funny, man. That's people, funny. people look at you suspect. They see you carrying lights in a hotel room. They just assume one thing. They just like, hey, I get it, man. This we we're, we're in a we're in a, a phase now, man, in this world, man, where people can make millions of dollars off of um, OF. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, it was um I was looking um I follow uh I follow you know different people man on IG and it was weird because um Blueface he came on there and he screenshotted his uh monthly revenue for uh OnlyFans and this cat makes 74 grand a month subscribers yes wow. 74,000 a month Wow. <laughs> well, well, here's the thing, real quick, and we'll jump into today's topic. But I was telling my wife the other day, I was telling Clarissa, I was like, look, it's easy to make money. It just depends on where your morals and values align. Yeah. It doesn't require much. I remember I was watching Chris Rock's latest stand up. I don't know if you've seen it or not. Uh, now, uh, is it on Netflix? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to check it out. I'm going to check it out. But he was like, basically, in a nutshell, he said, what is the number one way to get attention on social media? Because he's like, attention is the basically the new commerce, right? It's it's, it's the new form of, of currency. Right. He was like, the number one way is to show your ass. <laughs> hey, facts, man. That's, that's big facts. You know, yeah. so if you want to grab people's attention, I ain't saying it got to be yours. I'm just saying, like, you know, especially with women and stuff like that. So I was just like, yeah, I get it. So that's the new currency. That's neither, neither here nor there. I thought that would be, you know, some joke. Yeah, that's funny. That's funny as hell. Yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. But 40s Unfiltered, I'm glad we back, man. We got to start doing this more often. Today's topic is expectations. Right. And we chatted about this earlier, man. What did you think when I first talked to you about doing this whole thing on expectations? I mean, it blew me away, man. It's 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 just weird how you know when we ever do when we do collaborate and um, you know just brainstorm and bounce ideas off of each other. It's always one of those things, man. That's just in the moment and in and, and in that particular time, you know. 
And when you uh, had brought to me about um, expectations, man, I was just blown away, man. It's just kind of like, you know, it's almost to the point to where I'm used to it now, man, when you come up with something or when you say something to me, you bounce the idea off of me. And it's just kind of like, dang, like, bro, I was just thinking it. So it's right on time, man. Full circle, man. It's, it's crazy. Uh, for sure, it's, it's man. Crazy. For sure. I was doing some research on this whole thing on expectations. And the definition mm -hmm. when I looked it up online is a strong belief that something will happen or will be the case in the future. A belief mm -hmm. that someone will or should achieve something. Now, here's my hood version, because I had to go to Urban Dictionary. Mm -hmm. Urban Dictionary is, you know, they, they keep it yeah. above. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Urban Dictionary defined expectations as a guaranteed way for you to make sure that people will consistently disappoint you. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Let me repeat that for wow. those who's listening. Urban Dictionary defines expectations as a guaranteed way for you to make sure that people will consistently disappoint you. Um, mm. Yeah. And why then I had be, to, go ahead. I say, why can it be uh, um, that they can consistently you know, pull their weight or, or, or not disappoint you. It's wow. And we're going to talk about that. And it's something that I want to talk about. <laughs> and when I looked up the term should, because, you know, our therapist, she always say, you erase the word should from your vocabulary because we yeah. use it a lot. And I had to yeah. define that. And it's yeah. a word that's used to describe something that could ha that could happen, but likely will never due to a standard uh, lack of caring ethics or general sense. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, looking up those terms, I was like, I just wanted to make sure that we get some clarity on these terms, because I think a lot of times when we have conversations, we use words, but we aren't clear on the definition because what you define a word and the way I define the word might be different. And and that's that's something real big too, man. Because um, <clears throat> when you look at um, just context, you know, um, just from a biblical standpoint, when you're in seminary, there's three there's three things that you learn. There's a few things that you learn uh, in hom uh, hom homiletics. Mm -hmm. And that is to look at the scripture from an exegetical standpoint or an eisegetical standpoint. And when you look at it from the exegetical standpoint, you know, that that's the that's the true nature of the scripture. You're looking at the context, the content of the background, what the author was talking about, the audience, who the author was talking to, you know, et cetera. And then when you eisegete the scripture, you're taking your own vernacular on what you know or how you may interpret the scripture. And a lot of times we bring that into our communication with people, you know, um, our definition may be, we may have a definition of something like you said, and it may be, you know, totally different from how the other person that you're communicating with views or sees that definition. So it's very imperative that you do bring things into context and, 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 and talk about, you know, what is your understanding on, how do you define, what you're trying to convey to that person. So yeah, that's really big, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because our experiences are different. So that can be our truth yeah. from an individual yeah. perspective. Because a lot of times we just see life through our own lens. We really don't see it for what it is, but we just see it through our experiences. Yeah. I mean, and <clears throat> I, that, that's just something that's default. I mean, that's defaulted. All of us do that, man. And so we come to a place to where we learn how to see things from our perspective, the other perspective, and you know, from you know, from a one one through three three persons uh, perspective, you know, first, second, and third person perspective. So yeah, absolutely, bro. Mm -hmm. This expectations thing, man. I was, uh, of course, talking to you about this earlier, and. I got a revelation. Well, I didn't get a revelation. Actually, I was listening to Andy Stanley because he's one of my favorites <laughs> and listening to him in his marriage series. And I've listened to this series at least three times, 
possibly three to five times already. And he Mm -hmm. said most successful marriages are those who have no expectations. And it sounds very radical in a sense. But I realized, too, that a lot of us have expectations of our spouse that they might be too high. Or we don't even discuss these expectations, period, which is which really drives our spouse through a wall or our significant other, because they're looking at us like, why are you mad at me when we never had this conversation about what you expected from me? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, 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 man. And, and, and it's unfair. It can be really unfair, man, until you really, you know, get to the bottom of it and just understand you know, um, what you expect out this person and vice versa. So those are definitely conversations that have to have to be had, you know, when it comes to, you know, making expectations. I I agree with uh, Stanley. Mm -hmm. And then in that one aspect, I don't agree with him because um, Dr. Miles Monroe, you know, he he was uh, making emphasis on creating the roles once the spouse knows their role i mean the wife knows their role and the husband knows their their role there won't be any conflicts and once we both understand each other's roles that that's somewhat of i I believe expectations are in that because i expect you to do your role i expect you to walk into your role or to act in your role so if you don't act in that role we're going to clash because you're doing something that I'm supposed to be doing and I'm doing something that you're supposed to be doing. So it's going to always cause conflict. So we have to, there are expectations that, that have to be met. It's just, it, I think, I think the danger in it is when it's unspoken. Yeah. Yeah. I no, I, I totally agree. This is a, this is a different way of thinking, right? I mean, this isn't, this isn't common culture by today's standards. But I do think a lot of us get into relationships and marriages and we don't have the conversation about what I expect for you to do for me, right? I think Mm -hmm. think it almost kind of seemed narcissistic to a degree. And I hate using that term because everybody's narcissist by today's standards. Um, You know, somebody- Everybody, they wear you so loosely. (laughs) Yeah, right? They break up with somebody. Oh, he was a narcissist. I'm just like, oh my God. But anyway, I'm like, spell it. But anyway, I. <laughs> but anyway, oh man, I, I think it is important that you had a conversation. But I think over time, and you start to evolve, I think it's important that you have those conversations. That I'm changing because just from the couple of years that Clarissa and I have been together, married she's different than when I first met her at 27. She's, she's, she's a different person now. So I think it is important to have those conversations, but I think you can really find out if a person love you, if you don't have the expectation and they still come through for you because it's an unspoken language. It's almost as if like, I get it. Like I know where my spouse is in this season, let me do this for them where they're at. Yeah. If that makes sense. But go ahead. Yeah, no, no I mean, I, I, I'm just listening. That, that definitely it makes a lot of sense, man. Um, you know, meeting them where they're at and and allowing them, giving them, I guess you could say leeway in the situation, uh, but also, again, having that conversation with them and just trying to understand uh, where they are and and give them, you know, your expectation of them as far as like what you expect. Because I think when you do set some of those expectations sometimes that really helps you because um, it, it puts you in a place to let them know like, look, look, this is where I'm at. This is what I, this is what I need. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, what was it? It was it was it was today actually. I'm trying to think what it was. Uh, God, I can't think of what what it was right now. But I had it on the tip of my tongue. But it was a situation just today where me and um me and Jessica we kind of went back and forth about a situation, and she was just like, "Well, I expected you. I just thought you was. I just assumed when I thought you was going to do this." And I'm like, "No, 
I, I'm going to do this. <laughs> and she was just like, well, well, I didn't know. And I'm just like, okay, well, you didn't talk to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, it, 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 like, man, yeah, communication is it, it's really big in, in those areas of um, having the expectations of someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I think we do, because we evolve over time, right? Some We either get better or we get worse. I, I don't think there's any middle ground. No, it's not. It's it's, it's not. We, we, we get better, we get worse. Yeah. And one thing that I am learning is um, I was watching um, a podcast with, um, I forgot the two guys' names, but I think you actually put me on to them. I know but, you don't. Uh, uh, I think her name was Judge Lynn. I think mm -hmm. she was there. And um, she was just saying, you know, just in reference to what you were saying a few minutes ago, is that in marriage, when, because he asked her, he said, so what do I do, you know, when my spouse is acting up and stuff like this? She And she said, fix you. She said, either two things are going to happen. Either God is going to move them out the way or he's going to better them. Or they, are they, are they going to jump on board and, you know, act accordingly because they see the, the work that you're doing and the, and the change that you're putting in with them. So either two things are going to happen, you know, in this situation, man. Yeah. Yeah, two things. Yeah, and a lot, of, and I always tell people, I think I'm going to get a t-shirt made for it, but, you know, change start with change starts with me. I'm, I'm yeah. a big advocate of self-change first because, you know, as you know, Jason, you know, you've been around for a while. Hey, you can't make people, you can't change people. You can't, man. You, know? you can't. You can't. You, you can influence you can't. them, but you can't change them. You can't. You, you cannot. You cannot change them. And it's so weird, too, man, because, like, I know uh, I'm, I'm a former educator, and I know uh, one time our uh, principal, he had this meeting with us, and um, so he had this uh, PowerPoint going on, and there was a list of just uh, different things. It was a, a contrast list, and a uh, chart, rather, and it was, um, he was just saying, showing things that are realistic expectations and unrealistic unrealistic expectations and he had to have us choose which one which ones that we deem were realistic and unrealistic and he was just trying to pick our brains and just see where where we were at as far as what our expectations was and stuff like that and it was a really good exercise man because sometimes one danger is people they don't really know they don't they don't really know what's what you know and somebody could give them an expectation that they're trying to meet and they're like losing their mind trying to meet this expectation of someone or something and and feeling at it every time and don't it's not able to discern and know that it's unrealistic for them. It, it's it's nothing it's it's nothing that is obtainable for them to do. Yeah. What do you think about that, man? Yeah, and, and that's why you gotta have a conversation. Because I think after so many years and, and just kind of bringing that back to the marriage perspective, you have to be locked in with your spouse. I remember, and I think we talked about this before, T.D. Jake said one of the reasons divorce is so prevalent because he said it's almost like you're riding on a, on a, on a motorcycle and your spouse don't adjust to the turn. You know, he was like... Yeah, they fall off. Yeah, if she's riding on the back, you make a quick turn you ain't you you didn't give her any kind of warning or anything she fall off the back because you just made this pivot and no conversation was had and i know for me going in my first marriage that was one thing that uh i didn't do well was trying to check the temperature on where my ex-wife was like i never really took that time to find out where she was so that's uh -huh. that's where I went wrong because I was just like, I don't know. You know, you wake up one morning, you like, who is this chick? I don't know who they are, you know, because you never had the conversation. Because think about it, Jason, 17 year old Jason thinks totally different than 30 year old Jason. 30 year old Jason thinks totally different than 40 year old Jason. Right. And we just right. expect people to know about these changes in us. And it's almost not fair to them, like you said earlier. Yeah, it, it's it's not fair at all, man. It's not fair. Um, 
you know, even expanding on the marriage aspect of it, when I came into my marriage, man, um, there was a lot of expectations that that were required of me that um, that I, I didn't meet. And um, some of them were reasonable and some of them were very unreasonable. And um, like I said, when you when you are in a place where you're not healed and you you're you're that uh, people pleaser person or that have that Superman complex that, you know, we talked about in one of our uh, very first podcasts. It's it's really hard to not set that boundary and say, look, man, hey, I I can meet you on this, but this right here, I can't meet you on. And I believe when you really learn to love yourself and know yourself, when you when you're when you do see those expectations thrown at you that, you know, you can't meet, you're able to come back them and say, look, you know, hey. I can't do this, man. I, 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 I can't meet you here. You know, this is something that I can't do. This is something that I, I am able to commit to. And I believe when once that happened, that will take off the pressure from you and that will take off the disappointment or uh, that could potentially build into resentment from your spouse, you know, from them. So those are two key things, man. Mm, that's a bar so you basically saying that you you really need to just set that kind of boundary where you like i can do this but i i can't do that yeah so in in, in other words boundaries and expectations are synonymous to each other you you can't have one without the other mm -hmm. especially if you're in a place that you are unhealed or you don't know how to say no well especially in the place if you don't know how to set boundaries if you don't have enough self-love and self-care and self-esteem about yourself, you know, and you just let all willy-nilly go by, like, yeah, it, it, you're going to have trouble with with meeting people's expectations because you're going to you're going you're gonna to overdo yourself every single time, every single time. There's been times, you know, just uh, from uh, just a ministry aspect, you know, me being. I wear silver hats in, uh, in uh, the the ministry that I'm in right now, and um, uh, I I tell I tell my leader sometimes, hey, look, man, I can only commit to this time. You know, I I, I got family. I, that, there's things that I have to do, and I can't commit to this. And I had one friend that got really burned out because they never said no, and so that expectation of the leader for them was like, okay, well, this person is very reliable. True, they probably are reliable. But, you know, they're being overwhelmed. And they don't know how to tell you. And it's like in, in the leader's mind, oh, they're, they're reliable. So I can call, always call on them. And so it's it's just a big conflict, man, you know, that you that you would have to basically take care of man, before it turns into a monster. Yeah, a lot of people don't know how to say no. Um, a lot of people want to be looked at as dependent, you know, strong willed things of that nature. And, and and I get it, especially for us folk, right? You know, us us right. melanated folks. Um <laughs> but <laughs> but I think it this even spills over into our marriage because we think that we can do everything. Um and even really struggling with telling I know sometimes I struggle with telling my wife no, like depending on what it is. Because Boy. I yeah right because I want to be seen like that Superman. I want to be able to cover as much ground as I can. But when you don't discuss those expectations again, I do believe and correct me if I'm wrong. People will continue whether if it's a spouse or not. People will just continue to push, push, push on those expectations of you because they like they can handle this. They can handle this too. Like I, I think very few of us have mastered saying. I'm not going to call her today or I'm not going to call him today because I know they got a lot on their plate. Yeah. If, if, if you let them, if you let them do it, they will. And, and like, it's no, it's no shade. It's no, none of that. Like mm -hmm. even, even if I, if, even if you, if there were some things that you asked me to do and I continue to do them, that would make you more prone to continue to ask me. Like, I know you love me to death. You know, mm -hmm. I'm your little bro. I know you love me. And I know you would never 
do anything that would put me in a position that would be harmful or hurtful. But if you needed something from me and, and I continued to come through, you know, like you would keep on asking, you know what I'm saying? That, that's just, that's just human nature. You know, that's something that we do by default. And, you know, you got to get to that place to where you can say, look, man, I, Hey, <laughs> that's, that's what it is. Like, recently you know and, and you know about this and i i won't really just go as far as in the detail but recently you know what i'm saying like even in the marriage like this was my first time like really telling my wife no and it it, it got real real in there <laughs> because i finally stood up and said no but all the years we've been together for 11 and a half years so all those years i never told her no so she expected me always to say yes. And so when I finally said no, it was just like a gut punch. And so, yeah, yeah, man. So you, 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 you people going to continue to do it, man. That, that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be a spouse. It can be your mama, your daddy. Like, like you said, that's human nature. So we yeah. have to learn how to set boundaries for ourselves. Like you said, that's synonymous with these expectations. But like I was telling you earlier about the whole thing I got about expectations was not really having them for my wife. So I have to unlearn. I have to unlearn about what I expect opposed to letting her be. And Ooh, again, I think, yeah, I, I, I just really believe this is. A, so my expectations I had to change them for my wife because there's a lot of pressure that comes with that. Now, I do believe you can have the conversation, but I think it's mm -hmm. important too that your spouse know you. And like I was saying earlier, that once you take that expectation off the table, you can really tell if that person really loves you because they're going they're going to be willing. If they do love you, they're going to be willing to put in at work and know that this is what my husband like, or this is what my wife like, like those kind of things. But I do think we kind of put a debt on our spouse when we have a certain amount of expectations. And I'm trying to renew my mind in this area because I do believe that unspoken expectations can destroy a relationship, but allowing, like I said earlier, for your spouse to be, uh, because I do think that when we love our spouse for who they are, they really can blossom into who who God called them to be, opposed to us kind of putting these restrictions on them or the way we think they should be. Because I think that hurts a lot of marriages too. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I believe that wholeheartedly, man. Um, even... In the single, uh, in, in singleness, um, I have a friend right now um, that her father is, he's a man's man. And every time um, that she has a selection in a guy or she's dating someone in her selection process, man, it, it's very hard for her because she's very critical because this expectation, this bar that her father has set. And there's nothing wrong with it. You know, I, I don't want to discourage anyone from um, having uh, someone that you uh, have an idea of, you know, as far as women have an idea of as, that has set the standard as a man and what you want to um, mirror and model that man out there. I, I have no problems with it, no complaints at all about it. However, you just have to be careful because, you know, you could set that so high. That in your selection, you know, you you you're you're checking off everything, and it's just like, hey, he's still on me. He's still not my dad. You know what I'm saying? And you know, you could be you could be pretty much missing out on a potential blessing that God is giving you. You know, based off of setting those expectations and and standards, you know, of a, a of of what you would believe this person would be. You know, and um, that that that's a really, 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 really critical thing. You know that that you could do. So you you definitely have to be careful with that. Definitely have to be careful with it. 
Yeah, because times have changed, the generations have changed. So if if your dad is a man's man, <laughs> I don't know what that's going to look like in 2023 and trying to convert that to today's culture, you know? Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, man. It's, it's, it's like he, he checks all, all these boxes, but he doesn't do this. And it's just like you'll completely just throw them out, out, of, out of the way or throw her out of the way because they don't check all those boxes. And it's just like, dang, you know, th- this this would be your time of allowing that person, like you said, to to be, to be, and to, to maturate, to grow into the person that God has called them to be, you know what I'm saying? And and not put those expectations and those restrictions on them, man. Uh, it's, it's really a difficult thing, you know, to be in the – light in the beam of somebody's expectations and, and restrictions have that magnifying glass on you man it's it's egregious it's, it's grievous you know what i'm saying to be in that type of um under that type of pressure you know I, I wouldn't wish that on anyone you know going into something man you know you you have to really give enough grace and that's why one thing that's why i really believe that god honors marriage so much is because it really simplify it, it it really exemplifies, I'm sorry, the portrait of uh Christ in the church. And you know, uh I know you had threw out a scripture earlier, you know, it says while we were yet sinners, Christ loved us, he died for us. And so by him dying, that gave us the autonomy to be who we are in him. And so, I mean, he died for us. <laughs> no matter what we did, he died for us. And so that's how we have to be, you know, as our as 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 husband and wife, you know, to each other, you know, especially us as men. So, man, and that's good that you said that, man, as far as like men expound, expanding, giving that grace, expanding that grace to to, to your wife. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you need grace, man. I seen a, a post earlier today on uh, Instagram threads or whatever. But there was one lady, she talked about free will. And I was Mm -hmm. like, man, like God is so secure in who he is. He gave us the option to love him or not. (laughs) He didn't make us love him. Yeah, right. (laughs) You know, so so free will. So allowing someone to be who they are and they still rock with you, they still love you. Like to me, that speaks volumes. Um. And I do think if we are sacrificial in our approach, and when I say sacrificial, I'm saying as far as making sure that whoever we're with are good, then if they're emotionally intelligent enough, they'll reciprocate that back to us. So it's a it's a it's a cycle where 100. yeah, you look out for me, I look out for you. You look at, you know, I serve you, you serve me, I serve you. It's a cycle. So if we're willing to do those things, I think that can help us to have longevity as well as having a a healthy marriage. But we, I hate to say this, but we live in a in a, in a selfish culture. Selfish culture, man. It, you know, everything is Very just about selfish. me. Yeah, what can you do for me? It, it's all about me. You know, it's never really about being reciprocated. So allowing your spouse to be yeah. who they are, and, and I learned that in my first marriage. I was like, man, I one of the mistakes I made was trying to change my ex-wife into somebody that she wasn't. And that's, that's tough. So this time around, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to let her be. (laughs) I'm not going to try to change this woman. I'm just going to love her and have enough faith in God to, to, to keep us together where we can really grow together and, and have a good time growing together. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I I think like I guess I mean it's 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 a hard feeling because I've I've done it before and I've I've lived in that that shadow man of trying to meet someone's expectations and they're they they don't feel fulfilled one within themselves and so just imagine someone who who's not satisfied with themselves who doesn't feel good about themselves give you expectations that you can't meet. Like it's it's a bad place to be in, and 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 it's I wouldn't wish it again on my on my worst enemy, man. To to have that feeling, 
you know, to really just um, what Brandy say, man, uh, have you ever loved somebody so much and make you cry? Yeah. You know, you, you love somebody so much and you give somebody so much and you want to please this person. You want to make sure that everything is just good for them and stuff like that. And one is not reciprocated back to you. And then all what you're giving out it's just kind of like frowned upon or it's not good enough. That's, that's not a good feeling, man. Yeah. It's not, mm. it's not. You yeah. Know. Yeah. It, because like I was saying before, the change is inevitable. You know, change does happen. Uh, contrary to popular belief, some people think that some things never change. And I, I, I feel that, but for the most part, time will change you um like i say in, in a good way or either in a bad way but i think yeah. the expectations thing here, here's my issue with the expectations thing and i might have said this earlier i'm not sure but it almost kind of put that person in bondage to a degree because what do you do if that person can't meet your expectations like especially if you married to him. It's one thing if you are dating or you are in a relationship, but what if you married to him and then you're, you have this expectation and they're not willing to meet it. Like, what do you do? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question, man. What, what, what do you do? And, and like I said earlier, you know, that situation there, that's something you continue to work on you. Uh, that's the that's the way I would approach it. You know, if if the person that you know you communicated with them, you know you've expressed to them, you know what you need. And I think sometimes too, we have to really be able to discern what we need and what we want. Mm -hmm. I think the only time that there should be an expectation um, expressed is when there there is a need. It's a necessity that there is it's imperative that I have this. So prime example, um, you know, how we know about our love languages. One, uh, mine is personal touch. Mine is words of affirmation. I believe that I will definitely short circuit if I don't have, you know, personal touch or if I don't have affirmation said to me, you know, by my wife, you know, if she, if she's not, if she's, if she's not affirming me. So, I need to make sure I express that to her clearly. And if that's not being done, you know, I have to be able to uh, be mature and know, okay, well, one is probably just a, a, a growth issue with her, a maturity issue with her. And then also I have to know that, that maybe that's just a character flaw. So I have to rely on God and work on myself until she gets to that place to where she can be able to, you know, give me that, you know. And I have to know again, like, that's a need that I have. And I have to make sure I express it. So I believe that's the only time that, a, again, the expectation should be conveyed to your spouse is when it's a need and not a want. You know, we want a lot of things, but we don't really prime. We don't, you know, specifically need them, but we want a lot of, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. That's good. Wants and needs. Yeah, that's that's good, too, because... And, and and don't get me wrong, happiness, it's not your job, it's not your spouse's job to make you happy, right? It's not. It's, it's not their job. But I do think they they play a part in, you know, in, 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 in your joy, right? In certain aspects of your life, I think they play a part, but they shouldn't be the source. Yeah. Of joy or your happiness, like that only comes from God. But... I do think some people have a tendency to want, they want to be your everything, you know? And I'm like, those are people you run from. <laughs> Cause they're like, I want to be, you know, I want to be everything. And I'm just like, man, that could be controlling to a degree. I don't, you know, I, I love my wife, but I don't want her to be my everything because she's flawed. Because if I put it's my flawed. everything in her, I'm going to be sadly disappointed. Yeah. And it's so weird because, man, you know, one thing about God, he's a jealous guy. And I had a I had a really, 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 really 
just huge enlightenment, come to Jesus moment with God, man. Um, and God was just te- showing me uh, like the different patterns in my life. And one thing that I, I, I mean, it's inevitable. I love my wife. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I mean, if you follow me on social media, you'll know, like, I really love my wife. And through a lot of unhealed areas in my life and trauma that I've experienced in my life and my childhood and stuff like that, it caused me to have, you know, very uh, low self-esteem and not be able to value myself. And so once I got married, you know, I care, of course, carried those things into my marriage. And one thing that I saw is that I put my wife up as an idol. And I one thing, one pattern that God has showed me is that anytime he wants to get to me, or get a convey a message to me. Uh, uh, it's always through a situation where my wife always, uh, if, even if you look throughout the Bible, man, um, anytime that God wanted to speak to the children of Israel, man, and, and punish them, he always used like other nations, always, because they were always into idolatry. So it was the same concept, man. I, I didn't mean to get that deep, but God would always use my wife. Like it would be something with my wife because he knew that's how to get my attention. And so that's one thing that I noticed, man. And the one thing that I did also see is that, you know, he just showed me a lot of things about myself, man. That's that's all I would be at liberty to say. But yeah, that, that's how God works, man, all the time. So it's, it's it's we have to be careful that we don't put that person up as an idol. You know, like you say, if, if you're that person that you say you want to be everything for that person, man, you need to run. You need to run, 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 run. Because that's not a good thing yeah. at all. Because cause what's that Jesus says? Uh, if any man desire to come after me, he, you know, he must, must deny himself, take man. His cross. Yeah, deny himself and, you know, take up his cross and follow me. So I do think that we have to be sacrificial to a degree. Um it's I think marriage is just this perfect it's this mirror it's this image of allowing somebody else to see your flaws and if they are emotionally healthy or spiritually healthy like they can help you get through these processes you know yeah they're able to deal with it they're able to handle it can you handle me Mm -hmm. yeah it's like i heard a guy say the other day say we all got baggage but you just have to find someone who is willing to help you carry it Wow, that's bars. <laughs> bars. Yeah, right. You know, that's bars there, man. Yeah. Wow. Because we're all beautifully broken. And, and we talked about this on the show before. We all have issues. It's just a matter of who's, you know, some people, and again, I, I talk about this. Some people got sandwich bag size issues. Some people got mm-hmm. garbage bag size issues. It just depends on what you're willing to carry. Some people got industrial size uh, bags, man. Yeah, man. It's facts, bro. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's it's, good, man. That's really good. Yeah. That, so, that's really good, man. And, and that's and really the, good. And the thing about expectations is I'm I'm starting to realize too is saying thank you. Uh the things that we were taught as kids, you know, having manners, thank you. You know, I appreciate that. That when because the other day I was coming home from work and and Clarissa is like, like she works a full time job like I do, right? Like we both work full time jobs, but mm-hmm. she still have a tendency to make sure that we all eating at night, you know, sure that we have our dinner and stuff. So that I came home, and um, she didn't have my food ready, and I didn't say anything because I'm in this mindset of I need to take these expectations away from her because it could have easily went left. I could have been like man she ain't made my play yet like what's up with that you know what i'm saying and that could have ruined our night but yeah because i didn't have that expectation guess what jason she came to me and was like babe i'm so sorry i forgot to make make your plate why didn't you say anything and i was telling her i was like look i'm in this process of not having these expectations and people can say what they want once they hear this in the comment section i get it you could be like oh he's simping and all sort of stuff whatever i've been called a simp a million times but i'm realizing that because she loved me like i said earlier it clicked she was like oh i didn't have my husband plate ready so you see how all that plays into each other for one i didn't 
harp on her about why my plate wasn't ready. Number two, she loved me, so it brought back to her remembrance, like, oh, I didn't make sure I make my husband's plate. You see how that worked? Let me see how I make check. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Yeah. And just think, man, just think if had, had you went in on her, man. Yep. Been so archaic and stone age and and just went in on her, man. Like, yeah, she she wouldn't have she wouldn't have did nothing else for you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or no Arissa, she probably would have. <laughs> yeah. But so yeah, man. Like that's 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 good. That's good, bro. That's really good. That's really good. Cause normally that, that could have easily been another way, man, instead of just getting in, getting into that person's world and trying to figure out, you know, why that may may have happened. And you know, like I said, she just got caught up and overwhelmed with, with throughout the day, man, with the cares of life. Yeah. And just forgot. You know, I mean, we're human, we're flawed, you know. And so yeah. Like I said, I I really believe, man, where where we get uh expectations really just uh misconstrued it that is is not being able to discern what's a need and what's a want, man. And that's I think good. that's that's real vital to it, man. We have to understand like, okay, what do I need and what do I what do I just want? You know, and what what can I do without? Because some things, man, is is negotiable and some things are not negotiable. Like, you know, it's non-negotiable for, you know, what's a non-negotiable? I mean, well, it's not to get no booty. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a non-negotiable. You know what I'm saying? And like, we, we gotta get it. I mean, that's 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 just it's the high go, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. And so, I mean, and, I mean, and there's several non-negotiable. I mean, n- negotiables too. So, yeah. you just gotta be able. To, you gotta know what works with your spouse, man. You know, when it comes to expectations and stuff like that. But just in general, you know, when you set the boundaries, and you know, let the let, let just outside relationships, outside of marriage, you know. It's important that you set boundaries before you know you can go into the expectation part of it. Yeah, because mm-hmm. a lot of times people have, mm-hmm. yeah, because people have those expectations, and like I said before, they don't talk about it. They just assume it's those unmet expectations that are destroying relationships. And you come home with an attitude, and she looking at you like, "What's wrong with you?" You know, but it's yeah, because you didn't say what it was that you needed. And a lot of times we date people and we get into these relationships and the two things that we forget are boundaries and expectations. And then we wonder why the relationship never worked out. Yeah. Your boundary. Yep. We wonder why. We Mm -hmm. wonder why, man. And it's crazy too, man, how like shallow a lot of times we can be too, man. Just, 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 just completely like shallow. You know, like um, when it comes to just exterior things, you know what I'm saying? Like we just could just be so shallow and we could label that as an expectation on just trivial things. I mean, don't, things that don't even much matter. And that could really break up a solid thing that, you know, could have been potentially really solid. And it just breaks up because, you know, we're just so, again, selfish, man. We want things right now, right away, when we want it, how we want it, just like Burger King. And, you know, we want it our way. Yeah. And Burger King, we want it our way. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. 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 That's real, man. I think once we get to a place to where, especially for my single folk, be okay with, be willing to lose someone because you have boundaries or you have certain expectations, like be willing to to lose that person in the infancy stages of dating or relationships. Um, because the sooner the better. Right. Yeah. I think when you have yeah. them, you know, you want to talk about these expectations and boundaries <clears throat> two years later, <laughs> they like, where's this stuff coming from? They're like, what? You know? Yeah. I fear. And I, I remember, remember one thing that you said, man, and um, you know, you you, you teach people how to treat you. You teach people how to treat you, man. We we are, and I don't want to use the word to sound like some type of um, uh, chauvinist or some you know some type of weird person, but you know you train people how to treat you, like you train you train people how to treat you, man. 
And so it's very vital, you know, you know, as for singles, man, when you get into this, man, you know, you you have a face like Flint and you have a, a sternness about yourself to where you're creating those boundaries, you know, and 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 setting those expectations, you know, when you're single and and you're just starting out something, you, you have to set expectations and boundaries. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just part of it, you know. But as as the trust begins to build. And, you know, there's a um, a mutual, you know, reciprocated, you know, energy and love, you know, you can let those things kind of like fly off, you know, but before when you're starting into it, man, you got to teach them how to treat you, man. Mm-hmm. Yep. I you know? agree. Because some people, they, they, they are afraid to lose somebody because of their boundaries or their expectations. Because they, they might be second guessing themselves. They're like, am I asking for too much? You know, and I do believe the person that's willing to rock with you is going to accept you for who you are, for your boundaries and your expectations. Because one person's expectations is totally different than somebody else's. Yeah, yeah man. I'm trying to remember the post, uh, what the quote was, but it was saying, I'd rather marry late than, uh, basically paraphrasing, I'd rather marry somebody or pick my person person late in life versus me marrying somebody now and getting mm-hmm. a divorce or, you know, being a whole bunch of pain and hardship, you know, because I didn't take my time and make the right choice, you know, uh, because I wanted to stay with this person and not create these boundaries and not create these expectations of this person, you know, right. and stuff like this. So, yeah, man. Yeah. 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 It, it's, it's, it's better to Fall back and earn weight. And then, you know, yeah, right. Go into it, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I, I hope this episode has helped someone with boundaries, with expectations, because I do believe we need it, especially in today's culture. Uh, because the way someone else sees things and the way you see things can be totally different. So having a conversation really helps deepen the 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 communication in a relationship um any closing words jason before we jump off here no uh like my brother said man you know um even in marriage man you uh if you're all, if you are struggling with um uh setting expectations or are you in a position to where you are trying to meet someone's expectations uh you have to really sit back and just see if they're unrealistic or if they're realistic or they're reasonable and just to make sure that, um, you know, if you wanted to, to, to start setting them, just make sure that they're, it's, it's a need. It's coming from a place of, of, of where you need something and not what you want and um, go from there, man. Yeah, for sure, man. This has been another amazing segment. Uh, 40s unfiltered man glad for us to jump back in the saddle and make this thing happen we got yes, to often uh because i know the people enjoy the content make sure you leave a rating and review if you're listening to this on apple podcast i would love to hear what you had to say about the podcast rating and reviews help us to be more searchable when it comes to content what people are looking for us or so your uh, comment good or bad is very necessary so we appreciate that and if you are watching this on youtube make sure you hit the subscribe button hit the notification button so when i upload videos like this you you'll be one of the first people to get it so thanks again jason man we're gonna jump off of here and hopefully the people have was impacted by today's segment absolutely peace yes sir take care